Now, the government's admitted there's a benefits backlog, with more than 700,000 people still waiting for assessments for employment and support allowance, or ESA. And that's not the only benefit which has been delayed. In Prime Minister's questions yesterday, David Cameron was asked by Labour's uh, Cathy Clark about problems with the personal independence payment. It's the benefit which has replaced disability living allowance. Less than a quarter of people who have applied for the new personal independence payment have received a decision. And if we continue at this rate, it's going to take more than 40 years to get to the point where everyone gets assessed. Does the Prime Minister think that's acceptable? And what is he going to do about it? Well, well first of all, it's extremely important when we introduce these new benefits that we make sure it is done in a way that works well. So I would say it's very important not to have an artificial deadline of replacing one benefit with another. And we're joined now by the Minister for Disabled People, Mike Penning. Welcome to The Daily Andrew. Politics. More than 700,000 people waiting for assessments for employment and support allowance, many of them some of the most vulnerable uh, people on low incomes in the country. I mean, that's just not good enough, is it? No, it isn't, and I said so to the Select Committee yesterday. I've been in this job uh, just over eight months. I, I asked for uh, an immediate review of not only of the WCA as how it was being performed and who was performing it, and in the WCA it was Atos, as we know, and, and on PIP. What I would say is that figure is 10% less than the last time I did release figures. So the last time I did oral questions, we were around 770,000. It's something that we're getting Still there. over 700. Of course it is, it? and we've got to get Why it Why did you let down. it get to this? Not you personally, but the government. Why did the government <laughs> I, I, I let think, it get to I this think in there the was first a real, place? We have to look at what it is replaced. The DLA, when DLA was there, you were put on DLA basically for life. Only 7% of people that got DLA, which is all taxpayers' money, remember, actually got a face-to-face -face examination. At the moment, when I came in, it was around 97%. So you can see where the delays are coming in. We're getting that down. And in some areas now we're down to 80%. I want to get it lower so we can actually deliver the benefit. But a further 84,000 people are still on incapacity benefit and they've not even been moved over to ESA. No, but we've done a million. So you can use one figure and let me use the other figure. So you say 84,000. Well, if you've those done people, a million, those, why couldn't you get another 84,000? Well, because 000, I wanted to make sure... And this is really important that people that are coming on to benefits that desperately need that money get that benefit. People that are on IB are already keeping that benefit. They've not lost anything. They, you know, and and the, the reassessment I turned off so that we could make sure we get new people coming on. And then we also, on top of this, just to complete what we certainly from the outside seems a complete horlicks mess, delays with the personal independence payment as well. I mean, to such an extent that the National Audit Office found claimants were waiting an average of 107 days, terminally ill patients, 28 days. Yes. People who are dying when, and we can't when, even get money well, to Andrew, them in their final Andrew, weeks. So it's wrong. 28 days when I arrived, less than 10 days now. I promised the select committee and the lobby groups and the, the charities and the individuals that I will get down on terminal. I worked with Macmillan to get it down. I've got it down inside 10 days. That's still too high. I think we can get it down to three to five days. So, so, so you can guarantee that for any uh, terminally ill person waiting for this, they will now not have to wait more than 10 days? They haven't been waiting for more than 10 days. Well, they were at one but stage when, waiting for yes, 28. When it, well, it was, and I said that that was wrong, and I said to the select committee that I will get it down inside 10 days, and I've done so. Why was none of this foreseen? I think when any new benefit comes in, it's very, very difficult. Um, there was a real pressure, particularly on PIP, which is what I was referring to a moment ago when I said 97% of them, people were having face-to-face -face examinations. And that wasn't necessary. Those assessments were not necessary, that 97%. that we, It should be around about, in my opinion, 65, 35. What there was, it was a fear of getting it right and making sure that the decision is right. And what I'm absolutely adamant about, which is one of the reasons why I was on your show this morning, to show that so little of the people that are getting their decision now are going to appeal. You know, in, in WCA, which we all know we've had problems under the ATOS contract, which has been changed, and we've got a new provider going to be coming in, we've now got the eight, that's dropped by 89%. So the right. people that are really need the money are getting the money, and actually the people that are not getting the work is the judges in the appeal courts, which must be better for everybody. Is ATOS fit for purpose? ATOS are in the WCA. They weren't doing the work I wanted them to do on the ESA assessments. I, if I'd have sacked them like the Labour Party told me to do, and I could, we could have probably done that, I'd have paid them huge amounts of compensation. And well, that means you had a bad contract. If you're well, sacking I, them because well, they can't the perform, Labour Party, the Labour you Party, have to compensate The Labour Party wrote the contract in 1990. You're going to sack them now? They are going out and they're paying us compensation. 
not the other way around. Are you going to get rid of Atos? Altogether? Atos in WCA are leaving, and that is done. They are doing work for us in, in, under PIP, and actually they're doing a much better job under PIP. When will the backlog be cleared? It will be cleared when we can... Uh, we have a plan in place, um, and we hope, uh, and it does depend on the numbers coming through, but certainly as we go through, we will be in, we are actually clearing more that, that's coming in. I can't give you an exact date for that, because I'll obviously, as I said, I need to make sure that we get the right decision. It sounds like, amongst many other things, not least a, we can, uh, the, the, we're looking carefully at the, at the decisions. When, when a decision makes a decision, we're looking at that again before it goes back off. Um, that looks like that's working much better as well. The people who are replacing Atos, have they got a contract now that if they turn out to be useless in the months or years ahead, that you can get rid of them without it costing the taxpayer money? I haven't issued a new contract yet. That we're out to ten. But will it do moment. that? That's exactly what. Because the normally these will be. private companies run circles around you, not you personally, but the government. <laughs> well, I'm by the last to run circles around, but I am absolutely determined that the, the lessons need to be learned from the contract that was issued by the previous government when I inherited Atos in, in this situation, and that we actually get better for the taxpayer and better for the people that get. How benefit. much does this cost the taxpayer? In what respect? In these delays and all the rest of it, and dealing with Atos and bringing new people in. I'm well, not sure well if, we, if we had actually done, as I say, what Labour insisted I did, and others said, sack Atos, that would have cost us tens of millions of pounds to do so. We've actually got a substantial settlement with them that they've paid us, us money. That's the important thing that the tax right. back isn't ripped off. I think this is, I feel a bit sorry for Mike, really. I think he's in between a rock and a hard place. Um, he's inherited a problem, but of course... Everybody's inherited a problem because welfareism is failing across Western Europe and North America. Welfareism is actually failing. What happens is under, under beverage was an idea you were putting a safety net under people who were unfortunate, who were having a run of bad luck. What we have now, we've opened the doors of welfareism to far too many people. We've lost the original plot and that is what we're doing and we can't deliver. Uh, in the old and days, I completely disagree with uh, you. In the old right. days, mutual societies, the mutual, the friendly okay. societies. Yeah. Were I, 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 I didn't want this discussion to be one about the rights or wrongs of a welfare state. Okay. I'm dealing with something that's gone wrong with the existing one. Final uh, point to you: Does the government owe the people involved in this an apology? I've apologised. I apologised on the floor of the house. You know, this benefits are for the most needy people in our communities. We need to make sure that they get it and people that don't deserve it don't. Right, so that's why I apologise and I promised the House and I promised those people I would do something about it and that's exactly what I'm doing, Andrew. All right. Right, Penny, thank you for being with You're us. You're welcome.